Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Stochastic.com MLB Strategy Show. A little nine-game action on a Tuesday. Dave Lochran, Bat Bellman, at Fantasy Tips Matt. I'm at Lafayette underscore D, breaking it all down for you. Happy to have you with us. Hopefully, you guys had a good night. I, um, Matt and I were talking about this before the show. Like we had, We'd gone over a lot yesterday and said, yeah, maybe we just take some shots on some of these cheaper guys. No one would have expected Blanco going for a no-hitter which he did. And Matt, I thought I was not in any of the big stuff, but I thought I was live in the four seamer. I was sitting 20th when I went to bed and it was a Manaya Blanco lineup with Tucker and Pena and a five man Yankee stack. And I'm like, okay. And mind you, I went to bed shortly after the Yankees game started. They went up two or three, nothing. I was like, all right, maybe I'll yeah. wake up to something good. They ended up just essentially not doing anything, but boy, did I think I was primed. I'm like, all right, I got essentially the two asked, and I had several lineups with this same formation. So I, I, I should be good to, at, you know, in the sense of like, you get the two Astros that you need, just needed that Yankee stack to stay hot, and they did it. Like Stanton, Ju well, Judge specifically, Soto, those guys were. For me, big disappointments because I hit some manual ROI boosts on the Yankee stacks yesterday. You definitely needed Yiner Diaz with those other two, probably. Oh, no, um, I'm sorry. Diaz, not Pena. Diaz. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tracker. You needed Diaz and Tucker. D D so, Diaz yeah, yeah. The two multi homer games for Houston. Yeah. I'm Diaz with you. Diaz and Tucker. Yep. So that's painful because that happens to me a lot because I don't, especially with a young kid now, like stay up and watch every game on every slate. I just so happened to do that last night, though. Watch Blanco. Told you before the show we got on that, you know, I was thinking about our conversation. It just made a lot of sense. He was filthy in his last uh, spring training outing. He was really good last night. I watched a lot of that start. All seven Ks came on his changeup. Obviously, a really good lineup he was facing. He was really impressive. So then after that, you know, first the night started out, thought I was dead because I didn't have Manaya. Then thought I was dead because I didn't have the Astros because they got going early. Manaya was good, but he wasn't amazing. The Astros didn't do much except for the beginning and the end of the games. And I stacked Boston with the Yankees that you talked about. Boston was good, but they scored nine runs. I think they only had two extra base hits, two or three. So it was all, I mean, it was all Duran, right? Get, get a three, what do you have? Three and, stolen bases. I and he, I made he, three lineups. I told you I had two Blancos. My only Duran lineup was not with Blanco. So it was one mm. of those nights, you know. Yeah, and Duran was the, like with with Boston yesterday. Just some we've talked about this. Sometimes you get a lot of runs, but if you're not getting yes. the extra base hits, it doesn't matter. Like Duran was the guy that if you had him as a one off, you know, mm -hmm. maybe in some in some Houston stacks or whatever, you're looking really really good. But loading him up in Boston stacks actually hurt, ends up hurting you. No doubt, Boston was not good. They were not awful because they did score runs. So all their guys were just okay. No one was great except for Duran. But then the Yankees were a big disappointment. I was kind of with you. The Yankees do basically anything. And I think my night was, well, I know my night would have been a lot better. They just did it. Uh, no one did anything except for Volpe, who was in the one line I had with Duran and no Blanco. So again, it was just like one of those nights for me. Kind of lucky I cast one of three. On the same hand, I'm like, how the hell do I have a 10% no hitter in two of three yeah. lineups and lose money? I, but that's MLB DFS. Volpe, Volpe was was really solid, but amazingly, that was kind of it. I mean, that was it. Yeah. There really wasn't much else, which is a shame because they got off to a hot start. They got off to a nice start. I think it was the second inning, bottom of the order started. And I had a few from the bottom of the order because if you're trying yeah. to, if you're five man stack in the Yankees plus a three man Houston stack, even if you have cheap pitchers, you're not just loading up the entire top of the order. 
Probably wouldn't have mattered anyway. But anyway, Man. happy to have you guys with us. Take a single second, if you don't mind, a tone for your sins here on the Strategy Show and hit that thumbs up. Goes a long way for us here, trying to combat this pesky YouTube algorithm and subscribe to the channel. Also, leave a comment down below. If you're watching or listening after the fact, we read them, we respond to them. And if you remember, ever want to listen in podcast form, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, we got you covered out there. Any podcast platform, you can listen to any of our shows with a shelf life if you're not trying to do it on YouTube. All right, dude, you ready to get into this? Yeah, I am real quick, though, from your last night last night. I know that feeling all too well. Like, you go to sleep, you're looking good. You just need the one stack to continue going. I don't know about you, but I'm sure you, especially with the baby not sleeping, like, wake up in the middle of the night, probably, like, anxiously looking for that score, and then you see they didn't yeah. get anything, and you're like, why did I even wake up? Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, I won't, I won't wait. I try not to, cause then I'll just get pissed off. Like mm -hmm. I had a rough betting night last night and I woke up at two and checked all my accounts. I was like, I should have just waited. You know, then I yep. got to go back to sleep, you know, yep. but no, nah, man, I slept from like 11 to four fifteen. So we're running on fumes today. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I thought you, so that was it. You didn't even go to sleep after that. Um, no, I woke up at two and then went back to sleep till like okay. four fifteen. And I thought you were gonna say you woke up at four fifteen and then went back to sleep. Your midnight wake up was at two. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, yeah, it's been a nightmare around here lately. <laughs> <laughs> Any anyone anyone with the young ones knows it doesn't last forever. But my God, it sucks when it does. All right, let's talk baseball. Nine games today. A few really, really, really interesting spots like. No surprise to me that the Atlanta Braves are popping in the top stacks tool. I know Garrett Crochet looked great uh, in that opening day start, but he's got his hands full today, to say the least. Like, this is not your Detroit Tigers. This is the Atlanta Braves. 15% top stack probability in the top stack tool. That's twice as high as any other team on this slate. Can I tell you the one spot, though, and then we'll get into these games. The one spot that surprised me, and I know they're a good team. I know they have a lot of power. I was surprised that the Yankees have the second highest top stack probability against Gallon. Yeah, that's really surprising. I will say I'm a little bit hesitant to buy into this completely just because yesterday the changes after we did our show were so massive. Like, Oh, the yeah, Yankees things were... change for sure. So it's weird, though, because I don't know why they would change so much like throughout the course of the day, but they do. Um, and I'm with you. Like, that stands out as an easy outlier. Gallon was, you know, pitched a ton last year, pitched deep into the World Series, obviously. So he got started a little bit late this spring. Wasn't great in spring and wasn't great his first start, but he's still an elite pitcher. So I'm with you. Like, that is surprising, to say the least. I like Gallon today. We'll get into that, though. We can talk about it. Uh, obviously, pricing and everything comes heavily into play there. But let's kick it off with Detroit. And the New York Mets got the top stacks tool pulled up. Ownership running a sim as we speak here. So, um, you know, just looking at, at this slate in general, you have a lot of pitchers with, let's see, what, one, two, three, four, five, eight of them with double-digit ownership, but only four in the 20s. This is on DraftKings where you're playing two of them. In this Detroit and Mets game, you've got Casey Mize and Adrian Hauser, like, I don't know where you're at on a guy like Hauser, but it's against Detroit. The problem is that Hauser is just not an upside pitcher from a strikeout perspective. And yes, Detroit has some upside. I know you like them uh, over the course of, you know, 162 game season, but we've seen them already this year. They've given up some decent games to opposing pitchers. Crochet to be one to start the year. Hard to get to Hauser in this spot for me. Hard to get to pitching, I should say, in this spot. Yeah, I'm glad. Plus, you, like, weather that looks out. really bad, by the way. Sorry to cut you off. Weather looks right. real tough in the Northeast. I'm glad you mentioned that, but I'm also glad you pointed out my take on Detroit because that's exactly right. I don't like them or love them like every night from a DFS perspective. I just like their chances in a shitty division over the course of 162. For sure. Yeah, hundred percent. So this is a good spot for Hauser. He's just not very good. So he's coming in with nice leverage, but that's like the only thing I like about him besides his price point. There's just a bunch of good pitchers on this slate. It's kind of what you talked about yesterday. Um, we're back today, one of the season, more or less, 
where we've got really good starters on the hill. It's kind of the mishmash though. It's not full day one guys. It's a couple back end guys with a couple front end guys or with mostly front end guys. Hauser being one of the back end guys. I don't think we need to go there even in a good matchup. I don't think so either. I mean, is there, Oh, nice. Jason Clemens. I won the $4 20 max last night. How do I do the hall of fame? Hell yeah, dude. Congratulations. Just tweet us. Tweet us. As long as you actually, I know you're rocking that avatar because I was looking at the leaderboard on that. Uh, tweet us at stochastic H O F with a screenshot showing that you're in a field of 5,000 or more Finish top three, uh, stochastic.com slash avatar. As long as you're rocking the avatar, finish top three in a field of 5,000 or more. Doesn't matter what the entry is. You're getting the free month of anything you want. $200 value, anything you want. Uh, just tweet us those wins with the screenshot. And maybe you want to say something as well. That's always helpful. Um, Matt, I'll, I'll show you in a minute. But we had, I looked at 10 of the top 30 in the $4.20 max were stochastic avatars. So something's going well. Something is clearly going well. That's awesome. Yeah, just 10 real of the quick. Top 30, that's 33% of the top 30 were stochastic avatars yesterday. That's crazy. And it wasn't like any of the same like line. Like, maybe, maybe like one, I think maybe Aaron Costa had two, but no two, but it was essentially all different. Essentially everybody different. That's awesome. Yeah. Made me very happy. Would have been happier if it was me and not Jason, but congratulations, Jason. Uh, bats here. Detroit 3.9 run implied total. The Mets are sitting at 4.3. I guess the question now, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to look past this. I mentioned it earlier, but whether I do think is a real concern here. It, we'll we'll play this one by ear, Matt. But I know, like by me, it's supposed to rain, literally all day and all night until oh, yeah. Thursday through Thursday. I I think it's supposed to rain from now through midnight, uh, in New York. So, as of now, I don't really think I have much. But let's assume that this game clears up and this is supposed to play. Are you looking towards any Detroit or Mets stacks? The Mets look good from a leverage perspective, and they're higher than they've been. I don't think Mize is very good, but I think the most important thing you mentioned is the weather. I mean, right now it looks like this game is not going to play. Um, and with so many other games, I don't think we need to force this game at all, any side of it. It's all mediocre. I'm with you. It really is. I'm surprised you didn't say Detroit as a as a low owned stack. Um, yeah, Hauser's. I mean, I think Detroit looks just like the Mets. Like Hauser's not a good DFS pitcher, and he can certainly get lit up. But it's kind of like I feel about them last night. Like they just don't have a ton of power. Even if I think they're better than the masses do, they're not a team I'm going to be looking to stack and DFS that often. That said, they do look basically the exact same as the Mets and the Mets are off to an awful start to the season. What are they? Oh, and five, I think. Losses to the, all to the Brewers and Tigers. Yeah. It's not good. Um, but no, you're right. Plus Hauser's not a guy. Like, he's not good, but he's not a guy that gives up a lot of power and he's not a fly ball pitcher. So he doesn't make for an actual good matchup, even though he's not a good DFS pitcher. Amen. All right. Talk to me about Atlanta and the White Sox. Uh, Ronaldo Lopez, Garrett Crochet. We we said it. Crochet was great on opening day. I don't think anyone saw that coming. But the Braves have a five-and-a-half run implied total. They're massive favorites here on the road. Shit, man. It's White Sox at 3.7. But this is one to me where I see what Crochet did. I also know that this is a guy who leans heavily on the four-seamer and the slider to get out righties. You have a few righties in this lineup that crush both of those pitches. Ozzy Alves, man, going back to last year, this guy has dismantled, obviously batting from the right side of the plate, switch hitter, dismantled right-handed fastballs and sliders. That's a really interesting spot to me. But you also have a bunch of other talented bats here that can hit this pitch mix from Crochet. And as I said, this guy might end up being really good, but I just can't bring myself to go, all right, I saw what he did last week against the Tigers and try and parlay that information into anything against the Braves today. I'm with you there. I will say about Crochet, like, it's not like he came out of nowhere. I know that, you know, he missed, I think, all of last year or maybe a little bit more than that with, with injuries. But when he came up, he was drafted, like, 
10th overall or somewhere around there out of Tennessee, out of college. Well, the pedigree is there. For yeah, sure. like he came that. up. He came up that year and was like amazing out of the bullpen. But you're right, very unproven. This isn't a spot we're certainly looking at crochet. It's about how good slash up, how much upside do you think the Braves have? For me, I mean, they're the top stack on the board. They're almost double any other team in that regard. The ownership's there. They're coming in with leverage, so they're under-owned, but they are the highest-owned team on the slate. So I think that's worth noting, but they look amazing. You mentioned it. Albies is one of the best hitters against left-handed pitching in baseball right now. Their lineup is full of lefty mashers. I mean, they have one of the best lineups in baseball against any-handed pitching, Mm -hmm. especially against lefties. So they look elite here. I guess the question is, how easy will it be to fit these guys? Like yesterday, we saw you. We talked. We talked through this on the strategy show. Like, hey, these these expensive stacks would normally be hard to get to, but we had a lot of pretty good cheap pitching that ended up paying off in a huge way. What was what was Manaya seventy eight hundred, right? And Blanco mm-hmm. didn't. I think Blanco was like the cheapest pitcher on the slate. He was sixty five hundred. Yeah. So, I mean, that just gave us so much wiggle room. I don't know if we're going to have as, as much of that today. Of course, you have Assad against Colorado. Uh, pay attention to weather in that game. Brian Bayo, 8K. So, I I guess it's doable. I guess it's doable. It's doable. It's risky, though. I will say, like, yesterday we had a lot of unknown, unproven starters in risky, tough spots like Blanco. I mean – he was amazing, but that was a really tough spot on paper. Yeah. That's what makes it even more incredible. Tonight, it's like the opposite. Doesn't mean it's going to work out the opposite or the same as last night, but you've got, as you mentioned, Assad against Colorado, and then Ronaldo Lopez against the White Sox, who we'll touch on in a second. I think both those guys are worth at least talking about. Um, just because, like you said, I don't think it's as easy as last night uh, where we just – we almost had no choice but to roster cheap pitchers because there wasn't really any expensive guys. Exactly. Let's talk about Lopez uh, against his former team. There is there is some strikeout stuff there. There's no denying that. What he, he threw 66 innings last year. Uh, no starts. But, six, or I'm sorry, not 66 innings. He made 66 appearances last year. Uh, 60, 68 appearances, 66 innings. He had a 29%, oh, 30% strikeout rate. If we know one thing about this White Sox team is there are there are clearly strikeouts in this lineup. This lineup is as bad as the A's and Rockies. I think those three teams are teams that we consistently want to pick on with pitching. Um, doesn't mean it's always going to work out. Certainly a guy like Ronaldo Lopez is risky. He's not like that cheap, which might be my biggest hesitation to go there, but not pulling ownership, and I think there's real upside here. Uh, classic boomer bust GPP pitcher in my eyes, but I struggle to see the White Sox getting to him. That said, like I felt the same way about Maeda in the only game the White Sox hit well. So, sure, Lopez could get blown up, but I'll rely on the matchup here. I want to pick on the A's, Rockies, and White Sox. I hear you, and I assume you're not getting to much White Sox hitting them. No, I mean, if if Lopez were getting more ownership, I'd be more intrigued. They do have guys that have power, and Lopez can give up power, but the bottom of their lineup is so bad that I'm much more on the Lopez side here. Yeah, man. White Sox already striking out as a team at a 26% clip against righties to start the season in 72 plate appearances. Very, very negligible sample size, but uh, if you go back to – if you go back to last year, it's not apples for apples because it, the lineup's a little bit different. But uh, against righties, this is, again, you know, one of the, the top 10 highest strikeout rates uh, in the league. I'm with you. I think it's a really good spot. Is it is it like a safe spot? No, but neither was Blanco. Really, neither was Manaya when you think about it. Like, he just had a phenomenal game. He was a great play. Don't get me wrong. But none of these guys are ever safe unless they're wildly mispriced. But I think Lopez is going to be one of the popular cheap options. The Braves are going to be the most popular stack, and rightfully so. But if you start looking at this Colorado and Cubs game, again, pay attention to some weather here. This sh- I think this should be okay. From what I saw, this game should be all right. 
Colorado, Matt, a three-run implied total. Uh, this team is horrendous. I mean, th- they're terrible. I, I-, I saw – it might have been a blurb on, like, DraftKings. I guess that comes from Rotowire. I don't remember where it comes It might be Rotowire, like one of the blurbs. And it was like, Kyle Freeland's the closest thing to an ace Colorado has. And, I mean, the thought of that is is mind-numbing. This team's terrible. Yeah. So like them in the A's, but how do you not look at someone in Javier Assad and go, look, maybe he's not the greatest pitcher out there, but shit, he's facing the Rockies and they have a three run total today. The gall of someone to actually write that about Kyle Freeman. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the same thing. Um, Yeah, Colorado. And I feel like I like the pieces in their lineup more than I should, even though I acknowledge they're awful. They're awful. I mean, Assad is not a special pitcher or anything like that, but he's 6,600, good hitting weather, or good pitching weather, excuse me, facing Colorado. I mean, I don't think much more needs to be said. Like, this is not even a play on Assad himself. It's a play on his price tag in the matchup. And those two things added together make him one of the best pitchers on the slate. That's how much worse I think Oakland, Colorado, and the White Sox are. doesn't mean they won't have good games. I just think those teams are historically bad offensive. Yeah, and I think it's going to be like 45 degrees today or Mm -hmm. something at first pitch. Winds blowing left to right or right to left, but crosswinds. So you're right. This is a good spot. Again, we're going to be finding ourselves in these positions where you go, Hey, okay, is Assad, you know, the next Clayton Kershaw? No. Is he 6,600 against the team with the lowest total on the slate in good pitching weather? Yes. I feel like, Matt, the only drawback to playing Assad today is the fact that right now we have him projected at 25% and he's not a sure thing. Like, that's the only drawback I think that there is. Yeah, for sure. I hate playing guys like this that are getting ownership. But it's not like crazy ownership. As you mentioned, there's like, I don't know, what did you say? Eight guys that are in double digits. Assad is getting love, but I would expect him to just because of the matchup. I mean, these teams are that bad and he's the cheapest pitcher against one of the bad teams. So I think that ownership would be decreased substantially if he were 7,600, but he's not. Can't play Kyle Freeland today. Can't do it. Maybe you can, but but I can't I can't bring myself to do it. Um, I assume you're I mean, we haven't projected at one percent. Not a good spot. We we don't have the Cubs as a particularly great stacking option. Also, as I mentioned, it's not great hitting weather here either. I outside of Assad, I just don't actually love this game. Yes, yeah, same. Freeland is once in maybe a blue moon, I'll use him on a main slate, but the only time I'll ever really use Freeland is on like one of those three game afternoon or night slates where it's just about leverage against whatever offense is going to be 70% owned on slates like this. No. Um, Even though it is good pitching weather, if I had to choose, I'd choose the Cubs offense over Freeland, Of course, but I'm not really interested in much in this game. Like you said, Freeland is not an ace and he got destroyed by Arizona in his first start. But he's not, he's also not a guy I feel like I need to stack against unless it's a good offense in cores, of course. So here, I think the Cubs are just a middling offense and bad hitting weather, not really where I want to prioritize. He got absolutely tuned up in that game. (laughs) Yeah, he did. Toronto and Houston, Jose Barrios and Framber Valdez. Valdez ran into some trouble against New York last time out as well. Uh, was kind of cruising through the first several innings and then and then fell apart. But you've got them with a 4.8 total today against Barrios. You have Toronto at 3.9. So Houston, pretty sizable favorites in this game. Are you looking to either sides of pit? I know Toronto just got no hit, but you know, it's it's still, and you mentioned it at the top of the show, it's still a good Toronto offense. Uh, and I don't take much away from yesterday outside of one game in 162 game season and Blanco was just great. That's all it was. That said, Valdez is a very good pitcher. He is coming in with a ton of leverage. He's the second highest pitcher in our top two pitcher tool. 
18% chance of being a top two guy, only 9% ownership. Like that screams the guy that I want to use. I struggle though. I mean, Toronto is a very good offense in my eyes, especially against left-handed pitching. Valdez is a guy that keeps the ball on the ground. So I certainly am not interested in Toronto here. I just don't think that he looks substantially better than guys like, I think he looks substantially worse than a guy like Brian Bayo against Oakland, who's 500 cheaper. Even though I fully acknowledge Valdez is the better pitcher, quote unquote, it's all about matchups and price points. Valdez isn't too expensive. There's just guys cheaper that I think project just as well, almost. I think you're right. I mean, well, another thing too. All right, let me ask you this, right? Let me let me let me veer off course for a second. You have four. You have five guys. Well, I guess we could include. Let, let me go eighty five hundred and up. Okay. You have Framber Valdez, Bieber, Gallon, and Luis Castillo. Bieber and Castillo dueling against each other tonight in Seattle. Where would you rank Valdez among those four? Bieber, Gallon, Castillo, and Valdez, those four? Yeah. It's tough. This is one where, like, if I didn't know anything about baseball and I was just using the tools, and that's not a bad way to play DFS, I would have Valdez as my first guy because the tools are just screaming that he's being completely misrepresented here and not getting as much love as he should. That said, I'm cognizant of the spot. That's not how I play MLB. I don't think you need to differentiate with pitcher that much. So I think he's third, maybe fourth. I don't like Gallon as much as you do in this spot, but I do think I like him more than Valdez. So Valdez is fourth for me there. Okay. Interesting. So you got Bieber and Castillo and Gallon ahead of him. Yeah, I'm not a huge Valdez guy. Like, I acknowledge he's a good pitcher, but he's not someone that I target that much. He scored me badly in the baseball live finals last year, so he's still on my bad side. Man, I remember he was just, he was overpriced for a while last year where you could really not even play him. You know who else was? Christian Javier. Javier Both those guys was up were. north of 10K for a while. And yeah. Was just unraveling <laughs> by the day. Yes, like that. Hey, was I might be crazy. thinking of Javier as a matter of fact. There was a stretch for like a month and a half where it must have been, it probably was Javier, where Javier was like north of 10,000, but every single yes. start was pitching like a $6,000 pitcher. Yeah, when you first said that, my mind went to Javier. I think you're I couldn't right. remember I Valdez's price tags. I enough think you're to right. See. No, it was, it so, was Javier for sure. Because I remember saying to Josh, like, you can't touch this guy right now. Yeah. All right, how about this? Between Darvish, Bayo, Berrios, and Ronaldo Lopez, they're all within $700 of each other. Berrios is easily my least favorite there. Like, yeah. not even... I think Berrios is a good pitcher, but I'm not using him in this matchup. Me neither. No, I'd probably go... I might go Bayo, then Lopez, then Darvish. But that's tough. Yeah, I could see that. I think you're a lot safer with Darvish, but you I are. think Lopez has more upside. And that said, like yesterday, I know someone tweeted at me, uh, pitching option, who do I like more, Paxton or Hauk? And I said, I like Hauk more, but I acknowledge Paxton is higher upside. Well, Hauk had a high upside game, so you just never know. Right. Yeah, and you're getting the $700 discount. But I don't think you go wrong with either of those three options. And we'll talk about them. But, I mean, to me, is Houston a team that you want to pay up? Or I should say, to you, is Houston a team that you're looking to pay up for against uh, Barrios? Because we both agree that Barrios is a good pitcher. Do we pay the premium on Houston today when we have some other good stacking spots with more expensive teams? I think it's the classic. They don't look as good as other teams on paper because Barrios is a good pitcher. So their median outcome is, you know, not as likely as some other teams, but their upside is just as higher, higher than every team on the slate, especially with, oh, there is the Dodgers tonight, but they're facing Logan Webb. So yeah, their upside pay puts them always in play. As someone who plays minimal lineups, I'll probably play three lineups tonight. I don't think I'll prioritize Houston. I have FOMO from not playing them last night, but Doubt I'll stack them against Berrios with, like you said, just other teams in 
what I think is better spots. It is odd, though, where yesterday we had like four or five expensive teams on a seven-game slate, all of which were in really good matchups. Today, you have Atlanta against Crochet, but then Yankees against a very good pitcher in Zach Gallen, uh, Houston against a good pitcher in Barrios. You mentioned Dodgers against Logan Webb, um, Toronto against Valdez. There's some good pitchers going tonight against good teams. Makes it more difficult. Yeah, I wish I, you know, going back to keep, this is in my head about the Cubs. I wish there were better hitting weather there because I think that they would be a good stack if so, but it's not. Agreed. Do you have any interest in Toronto bats against Valdez? No, because he just keeps the ball on the ground. So I'm always kind of intrigued with Toronto against lefties, kind of like San Diego, but I don't think I want to pick on Valdez here. I think Toronto is a multi-entry type team and that's it. All right. Let's get into the next game here. Before we do, uh, tomorrow, last day, last day to get the 30% off any subscription, any package that you want, be it Sims, which is everything, right? Uh, literally everything we have on the site, including the Sims, the contest generator, the post-contest simulator, all of that stuff. 30% uh, off the lineup generator, 30% off the all-access data package. Say you just, you don't want the Sims, but you want the ownership, you want the top stacks tool, the, the cherished top stacks tool, player projections, the premium discord, all of that stuff. Plus we threw in a, a light version of the Sims for free. You can do that. It doesn't matter what you want. It doesn't matter if it's a week, a month, any subscription you want, 30% off. Tomorrow is the last day. And um, yeah, just one more time, shout out to Jason from earlier, taking down the four seamer. The, the leaderboard I told you, Matt, just totally scattered with stochastic avatars using the tools, using the Sims. Yeah, it's on the screen right there. First place, there he is, JMAT69, seventh. There's another one, another one. Uh, dude, I'm telling you, through 30, there were 10. Plus, in the big one, Stochastic didn't win it, but they were scattered all across the top 20. So it's a good night when you see uh, that many Stochastic avatars. It tells you that the tools are working. Peter Hanley, too. Um, I don't think I mentioned it yesterday, but our good friend Peter Hanley, took down first place on Easter, 50K. I know Josh was right behind him, both of whom rocking the tools, rocking the stochastic avatar. So we're off to a good start on the season. Now, uh, time for you and me to get one, brother. Let's make it happen. Yeah, let's get it tonight. Let's get 30% off. That's up tomorrow. Last day, 30% off anything you want. Link in the description and in chat. And if you ever have any questions, hit me up. My DMs are always open. You can always hit us up really anywhere, and we're happy to help you out. Brian Bayo, uh, Alex Wood, Boston. Hey, you said it. If you took if you took Duran out of there, Boston was like a wildly mediocre team yesterday. He had the the, the three stolen bases, just a great game at the top of the order. But Bayo's a guy that we got to get into a little bit here. Not, you know, last year he pitched what 157 innings. You didn't see elite strikeout upside. Which is funny because this is a guy like in AAA was a what thirty four I think percent strikeout pitcher, so maybe maybe he's still live to get north of MLB average there, but the matchup is just so good that I don't know how you ignore this and you can really disguise a lot of the warts and inadequacies of pitchers when you're going up against a team like Oakland in a pitcher friendly park. That's all it is. It's certainly not the safest play in the world because he's hasn't been the safest pitcher, obviously, throughout his limited experience pitching in the big leagues. But another guy comes with a ton of pedigree. You presume that the strikeout stuff will continue to at least get better, even if it's not going to be elite. It's just a matchup in Oakland against this A's lineup, which is just atrocious. We saw Tanner Houck yesterday, who I feel more comfortable with Houck than I do Bayo, but... I don't think they're different levels of pitcher. Just completely wipe out this A's lineup. 10 Ks was absolutely dominant. This A's team is a mess. Boston's another big money line favorite here again tonight. So not playing him because of the win, but it's a feather in his cap. Bale looks really, really good to me here. The ownership is there, but I don't really care. A bunch of these guys are getting love. You have to roster two pitchers on DraftKings. Ton of ways to get different with bats. Bayo's on my short list of like four guys that I really like here. Agreed. Yeah, 3.8 run implied total. Oakland, 3% top stack probability. Nothing looks good there. 
by any stretch. Um, Boston actually has the third highest top stack probability on this site, interestingly enough. But I'll go back to what I said a minute ago. I think a lot of that is just because some good teams are facing good pitchers. So you're going to see teams like Boston kind of rise to the top here. I think the Yankees come down a little bit. Maybe not. Maybe I have more respect for Gallon than I should, but we'll get to him in a moment, and I'll tell you exactly why um, I do. But Boston's profiling pretty well right now. Second highest stack score in the top stack tool, third highest top stack probability. They're also not, you know, you look at the, the top value percentage, and so many of these top teams are really low down. Boston's like fifth. So what do you make of them against a guy like Alex Wood, who has always just been a pretty decent arm? Nothing great, decent. They're going up against the lefty today in Oakland. I don't mind Boston again tonight. I don't like them as much as I did last night against a popular Joe Boyle, who had shown the propensity to put guys on. I respect Alex Wood, but I have no problem using bats against him. The ballpark is my biggest concern. We saw it play out last night. Uh, it's tough to hit home runs here. You're going to need a lot of doubles and stuff. And even last night, they scored nine runs and didn't really get there outside of Durham. So I don't think they're my favorite stack on the board, but they showed buying signs last night. I think this lineup is good. I think they profile well against lefties. So they're in play for me. Maybe not my top stack on the board, but I think your point is very well taken. A lot of offense tonight are facing good pitchers. So it's almost like six and one half dozen the other, whether you're getting a bad ballpark or a good pitcher you're facing. So I like Boston here for sure. So do I. I don't think you get to the Oakland A's. You know, the problem with them is even when you're I, – I'm always willing to to stack a team that's going up against a, a really popular pitcher who isn't elite, right? Because we've seen – you know, more time, not more times than not, but very often you, you have a, a really popular pitcher that's, you know, affordable against not a great team. Uh, and he ends up just not coming through problem. I have with Oakland opposed to some of these other teams, like a lot of times you'll have a great matchup against the team that strikes out a ton, but at least has some power and you can rack up some home runs. Maybe it's a decent park. What are the redeeming qualities you get about this Oakland offense? Absolutely nothing. Um, Personally, and this might be a hot take or whatever, I would stack Colorado between the three offenses that are awful, Oakland, Colorado, and the White Sox. Probably bias on me, but the other thing about Oakland, and like Greg made this point the other day when we were doing the show, it's not like they're 0% owned. Like 3.5% of the field is still going to have them. I think it's just a waste. I would only even consider, like I probably wouldn't take them out of my pool if I were making 150, but I doubt I would get much. It's just... The type of thing where, like, I struggle to see, even if they get to Bayo, them, like, winning the slate. It's more of, like, just fade Bayo in that case. Yeah, right. You don't need the leverage getting to, to Oakland. You're right. No. It's really, it's it's unnecessary. All right. Uh, anything else for this game? No, it's all Boston here, which you're going to see a lot when good, to, decent to good teams play Oakland. Well, let's get to the Yankees in Arizona. Nestor Cortez, Zach Gallon. Cortez has good strikeout stuff, but uh, things can get squirrely for him quickly, and we've seen that many times. It's just he's one of he's. I'm not he's not Francisco Liriano, right? But if you guys remember, like Francisco Liriano, you would know if you were going to have a good start from him within his first ten pitches. Like you could turn the TV off and walk away when he walks the first batter on four pitches and just know that it's over or he's dialed in. I think Cortez has some of that strikeout upside, but he also has that big time implosion upside. And on the other hand, Gallon last year, I, I don't know necessarily what it is about Arizona pitchers at home, but some of these guys were just really good at home, good everywhere, but at home really good. And Zach Gallon, 30% K rate at home. 4% walk rate, 0.6 home runs per nine. The, the reason he intrigues me today is more so, not because the Yankees aren't good, because they are, but the Yankees, look, a lot of power, draw a lot of walks. I think Judge had like a 20% walk rate last year. They draw a lot of walks. They have a lot of power. But they also had four guys that should be in the lineup tonight 
that had 25 plus percent strikeout rates against right-handed pitching last season. So between Judge, Stanton, Volpe, uh, who am I missing? Who's the fourth? Who's the fourth high K guy in here? Uh, Judge Stanton. Torres. Who? Torres or no? I can't. I can't remember. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. But you'll have to take my word for it. They strike out at a high clip. Oh, Rizzo. Rizzo was oh, yeah. a 25% K rate against righties. Gallon can get a boatload of strikeouts tonight if he keeps the ball in the yard. And that's something he didn't, he excelled at last year, particularly at home. So all I'm saying is at 13%, I think the ceiling is actually here, despite the kind of daunting nature of looking at this, this Yankees lineup on the surface. Yeah, I'm with you. I think the case for Gallon for me is you can make the easy argument he's the best pitcher on the slate. Maybe get some pushback, Luis Castillo, but that's it. So, yeah, it's a tough matchup from a floor perspective. If the Yankees get him, they're probably going to put runs on the board via the home run, but it doesn't change his upside here against a lineup that can strike out. So, I'm with you. Right now, the tools, like I just think the Yankees are going to go down in the tools as we go throughout the day. As of right now, I would have interest in both sides, Gallon and the Yankees. But by the time we hit lock, I imagine I would only be really playing Gallon, if anything, from either side there. Do you have interest in these Arizona bats or Nestor Cortez? No, on Cortez. I'm with you. He has Liriano like tendencies, especially recently. So I think that puts Arizona in, in play. Um, this lineup has power. Hour and they run. So another team I never mind getting to. 7% chance to be in the top stack, pretty much right in line with their ownership. I don't love them here. I respect Cortez, and certainly their floor here is low if Cortez is good Cortez today. But if he's not, they have upside. And they've got another – this is another team that has a couple guys that really, really destroy left-handed pitching, namely Lourdes Gurriel, who is red hot to start the year. Yeah, that's how I see it too, man. And just it, if Cortez is dialed in, you know, you may be throwing your Diamondback stacks out the window. But uh, if he's not, and he's struggling out of the gate, it could be a long night for him. The D-backs at home could uh, could definitely put up some numbers you're, you're trying to get to. And again, good teams facing good pitchers, good pitchers facing good teams. I do think this is one where, the upside warrants us getting to some Arizona. Uh, I did run the Sims. And by the way, Arizona expensive map, but not, not prohibitive to the point where you can't get to them. Like you, you can still get to Arizona today. I think you'll be able to get there relatively easily. Yes. Yeah, same. They've got a couple cheap guys also that you can throw in there like blaze Alexander. Yes. This real name is blaze 2,900 <laughs> shortstop. So Yeah. Anything else from this game you want to get to? Mm -mm, I'm with you, though. I think that all sides of it have upside. The least likely for me to get to is Cortez, for sure. Hey, $20 Super Chat from Jorge. What's up, brother? Appreciate it. People, get the Sims now. A little unsolicited endorsement here. Gotta love it. Got on Sunday NASCAR first place without knowing a thing about it, and yesterday got seventh in the $1 Minimax. Do yourself a favor. Sign up to start winning and stop guessing. I love it. Appreciate you, man. Uh, thanks a lot. I didn't need to do that, but thank you for the super chat as always. Um, and thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Matt and I are having some fun doing these shows for sure. I like talking baseball, at least early in the year. <laughs> ask ask me again in late July and August when I'm getting ready for football, how much I love doing baseball. But earlier in the yeah. year, I love it, Matt. I know you it love gets it all to year be, long. I love it. It does get to be, it's so, it's every day. It's so constant that it gets to be a little bit of a drain. But yeah, I love talking baseball with especially people that like, like talking baseball. And I can just tell you enjoy it. So it just it's makes fun, these man. shows a lot of fun. I think it's fun because like the stats are unlimited when it comes to baseball, you can, you can make an argument for or against anybody. If you really wanted to just, right. given, you know, the abundance of stats everywhere. Like you think about fan graph, stat cast, baseball perspective, like all of these that just have an insane amount of stuff. It's so nuanced. Yeah, it's fun to talk about. Football is still my my favorite to talk about. Absolutely love it. Like, you'll never catch me talking about baseball heavily leading up to the season. I know you would. But football, I start digging into in April. 
the thing about football that I feel like makes it so fun to talk about is that there's so few games. And they're like even during yeah. Yeah, they're they're not novelty, like yeah. each game is worth so much. And even during the season, I know there's Monday games and you know, a game on Monday and Thursday, but everything is almost congregated on that Sunday where it hits like crack. You know what I mean? You're just like, <laughs> it all leads up to that. Damn right. Damn right. All right. St. Louis and San Diego, by the way, would you like to take a guess right now? What my highest exposure is to five man stacks in a, in, I just ran the Sims. I mean, I'm going to say the Sims have you on five man. Um, Uh, I'm going to say the Yankees. No, it's a good guess. The Mets right now. Wow. I wasn't even really thinking about them with the weather, but how would the Sims know anything about the weather? Right, they don't. Right now we're projecting them in. Sure. I will say, though, that the Mets, have in in the off chance that this game played, you know, like an 0-5 team coming in, yeah. people who are hand-building are going to be way down on them, <laughs> like you know, just not wanting to go near them. They actually, they have the second highest leverage score in the top stack tool. They are really interesting against Casey Mize. I just don't think this game plays. Same. I was thinking about it when we were talking about them, about what we talked about yesterday, Houston. Like sometimes when these teams really struggle and then when they go off, they really go off. Certainly I don't have the same confidence in the Mets doing that, but this Mets lineup, like they're old and they're probably overrated, but they're not bad. They've got guys with yeah. power in their lineup. So yep. I'm with you. Casey Mize is not good. Um, probably the only reason he's in the rotation is because they spent so much draft capital on him. So I'm with you. Like the Mets really stand out from a tournament perspective if this game does play. And the other thing I'll say is that this low ownership has nothing to do with the weather because the low ownership is just coming from the Sims. Exactly. Yes. Right. I mean, it's still probably not going to play, but I think we're on the same page here. It would be, yeah. If if we somehow got the all clear, I think I would be for sure overweight on Mets. That's at least how it looks right now. Yeah. Same. Uh, Miles Michaelis against San Diego. I want nothing to do with that. Yeah. I mean, he is very rarely a DFS pit, a pitcher I want to use in DFS, certainly not in a spot like this. San Diego's lineup is good, good. underperformed last year, but still very good, even without Soto. Yeah. It's not a spot I'm trying to get to. You Darvish, on the other hand, listen, St. Louis, this is another one of those teams where I think talk to me in a month or two and we'll get a better idea of how good this team or how bad this team is. Because I think the jury's kind of still out on them. But there's some bats in this lineup that are still pretty good, pretty powerful. That said, you Darvish right now is pulling uh, north of 24, almost 25%. He's one of the four players looking at our ownership projections right now between Bieber, Bayo, Assad, and Darvish at 24 plus percent ownership. Then it drops off a cliff to 15% Castillo. Yeah. So this is a classic MLB, like Darvish is the better pitcher, you know, more established guy than Bayo and those other guys, but much tougher spot for Darvish. And I'm not scared of St. Louis at all. You know, their lineup is, Good with upside, but not anything I'm scared of. But it's still good with upside. Whereas Bayo's against Oakland. We talked about even like Ronaldo Lopez. I like Darvish here, but with ownership being basically the same with him, Bayo, Assad, and Bieber, I like those other guys more. And we'll get to him in a minute. And this isn't even a Cleveland Homer thing at all, but I do like Bieber a lot here. So Darvish is probably on the outskirts for me. All right. Among those. All right. So now we've talked about these. So you put I, clearly among those guys, I asked you the, those four pitches I asked you about earlier, right? Mm -hmm. You're putting Bieber number one right now. I think it's Bayo actually. I oh, think okay. It is so Bayo, Bieber, then Castillo. I think Lopez. Oh, which re Oh, okay. That's to the top end. Yeah. So, Castillo and Gallon are really close for me. Um, I think that Castillo is safer. Gallon has higher upside. Um, I don't love either of those guys, though. I think that for me, it's really between the four guys I like a lot, 
going kind of mixing matching price range. Bayo, Bieber, Lopez, and Assad. Do you like these Padre bats against St. Louis? Nah, I like them more than Nicholas, but not enough where it's actionable for me. It's someone playing minimal lineups. Like if I land, land eh, if I land on Tatis, yeah, please, or any of their good hitters, but they're also expensive as a stack. Not a good ballpark. Nicholas is a guy, but he's not a trash can either. I'm getting very little San Diego right now. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm just pulling up pitcher exposures real quick to see where I'm at, where I'm landing at, at 1152 Eastern time. A lot of Assad, no surprise, right? A lot Not of Valdez, you pointed that out earlier that he, and this could change throughout the day. If the tools aren't look, the tools aren't seeing him as a, you know, high leverage spot later in the day, this will change. I am getting some Castillo, but okay. So 13% Darvish. That's where I'm at. No, no miles. Michael is. So, yeah, so yeah. you're considerably under on Darvish. Right now, I'm like half the field, yeah. Yeah, so I don't hate that at all. I mean, it's certainly I wouldn't want zero if I were playing 150, but that would be a fine stance for me. Yeah, for sure. Getting around 13%, no issues there. And then, because then you get to this Bieber and Castillo game. Uh, Cleveland, three and a half run implied total. Seattle, 3.7 run implied total. Two aces towing the rubber tonight in Seattle. Castillo had a tough time out last game. I, I want to start with him for a second because I'd like to get your thoughts on a matchup like this where it's not a good Cleveland team, right? But it's also not a high strikeout lineup either. And we saw a lot of that last year where, you know, pitchers could work deep into a game, work some short innings, but still not be necessary because the strikeouts aren't as abundant as you get with other teams. Does that matter to you tonight? It certainly matters. Matters less with a guy like Castillo in my mind, who yeah. just has the stuff to dominate anyone. That said, yeah, it matters. Like that's why I don't like Castillo as much as the other guys, because yeah, I'm with you. Cleveland is a middling offense. They're not very good outside of Jose Ramirez, but they don't strike out. And when you're paying 9,400 for a guy, you want that inherent upside. That said, um, a lot of the good pitchers on this slate are in top spots. As we've talked about, a lot of the good hitting offenses are in good spots. So that only makes sense. Castillo is certainly in play for me. Also coming in with nice leverage now, which is interesting. Like you don't normally see the top two pitchers in the pitcher, in the top pitcher tool being the top two leverage guys also. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, at this rate, you're just getting to both of these guys. I, I, it's 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 a non-existent total in this game. Both of them have mid three run implied totals. I don't know. I mean, what was the to the total seven in a in a pitcher friendly park? I just think you're going to have a tough time getting away from either of these guys. And the more you look at it, it does feel like it kind of pushes Darvish out a little bit. Although. Castillo's only getting 15%, and I think that's why in this initial Sims run, I'm getting to 31% Luis Castillo. The upside like is his, so big for, for only 15% on a nine-game slate. I like Castillo way more than I like Valdez, who's – they're both coming in with leverage. So that would be my choice for leverage. It would be Castillo. And I will say this about Bieber. I think the matchup for Bieber – is higher upside than Castillo just because Seattle will strike out more than Cleveland. But I think Seattle's offense has more upside than Cleveland's. So there's more downside with Bieber, but he looked dominant in his last start again against Oakland. So take it with a big grain of salt, but he was also really good in spring. He's healthy. I like Bieber a lot. Again, I think it's those four guys I mentioned, but the more I talk about it, the more I think Castillo is in that mix. And like if salary weren't a thing, Castillo would be my favorite pitcher on the slate. And that means something. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, let's get to this last. Well, I don't have any bats from this game. So let do you? No. Nah. Let, let's get to San Francisco and the Dodgers. Uh, before we do, sponsor of the show, Sleeper. Throw this out there to you guys who are not there yet. First of all, first match deposit bonus up to $500. That's huge. Biggest one out there. 
Uh, and on top of that, the dynamic pricing, which means that you can take home runs, you can take doubles, stolen bases, all of that stuff, and put them into your cards up to 100 extra entry, unlike the other ones where you're only getting stuff that has standard juice because they have the dynamic payouts, the dynamic pricing, which are multipliers. So like, you know, you take a Aaron Judge home run or something, well, it would be 3X in, just on that one, instead of it just being the standard one play, two play, three play. Very cool. But here's what they do better than, or more than anyone else. They have four free squares for this week. Today, LeBron James from 25 and a half points to half a point against the Raptors. Tomorrow, Donovan Mitchell from 22 and a half points to half a point. Take, take higher on all of these. Uh, Wednesday, Zach Wheeler strikeout six and a half to half a strikeout. And Thursday, Jokic points 27 and a half to half a point. So free squares every day this week. If you're not on sleeper, link in the description and in the chat up to $500. First match deposit bonus. Very cool format they've got over there with the dynamic pricing as well. But if nothing else, uh, massive ROI opportunities, just jumping on those free squares. All right. San Fran and the Dodgers. Logan Webb. I, I, what, from what I'm seeing is Yarbrough is going to be, he's the, the long reliever today. Are you seeing the same? Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you, are you going to Logan Webb? Are you go? I, I mean, I'm not paying 8,200 for Ryan Yarbrough as a, as a relief pitcher. No. And I'm not paying 8,300 for Webb against the Dodgers. I'd, I'd choose Webb over Yarbrough if forced to choose between the two, but no, I don't like either pitching option in this game. Me neither. But Webb's not a bad pitcher. I mean, Dodgers do have a 4.7 total, run total. A lot of that just being that it's the Dodgers. I I don't know how you confidently say, you know what, I'm going to, you know, heavy Dodgers today or I'm going to heavy San Francisco bats today. Are, are, are you loading? I mean... The Dodgers are always going to look fine, but it's another example of really good team against a pretty good pitcher. Yeah, I think Webb is good, like good enough where good. even the Dodgers, I'm not – like the Dodgers are the classic always have upside team. But even – like we talked about Houston versus Barrios. I think Webb is a level up from Barrios right now. So, like, I'd rather stack Houston against a good pitcher than the Dodgers here against a even better pitcher in my mind. Um Again, it's the Dodgers, so they're always in play. But even the top stack tool, like they're sixth today. You know, usually they're going to be number one, two, somewhere up there. Not overly interested in them, except from a low-owned tournament perspective. But really hard to get there also. Their top of the lineup is crazy expensive. And we don't have like the cheap, cheap pitching options to get to. As far as San Fran goes, they're actually one of the highest-owned offenses on the board because they're really cheap. They're the top value stack of any team, second in ownership behind the Yankees. Their top stack percentage is right behind the Dodgers. So it's higher than it normally will be, but I don't know. I don't really want to play chalky Giants in this ballpark, but the other side of that is their lineup does set up good against left-handers. I think Alex Vesla's open, who's also a lefty, with the addition of Matt Chapman and Jorge, Jorge Soler, like they've got some guys that can hit left-handed pitching. I wish the ownership weren't there. Ultimately, that's what will keep me off it. But I don't think it's crazy given their price tags with expensive pitching options today. Let's wrap it up with this. Top three pitchers, top three stacks for tonight's slate. We'll do pitchers first. Give me your top three. My top three pitchers are Bayo, Bieber, and I'm going to go Assad. Okay. I'll go Bayo. Assad and Castillo. I uh, I think the ownership right now in Castillo, just given the insane strikeout upside, I, I'm willing to overlook that Cleveland is not the heaviest strikeout team, particularly given that this is also in a good venue for pitchers. That makes a lot of sense. And then after we list our top stats, I have like an off, like a non sequitur football question to ask you. All right. Well, let's go. Top stacks. Who do you got? Top three. Braves, easy, number one. I'm going to go Red Sox, two. And then, you know, I'm going to pray it plays. And that's three. Okay, I like that. I would agree with you if it plays. I'm going to go Braves, Boston, uh, and Arizona. 
praying for that Nestor Cortez blow up because the implosions can happen or he's just good. What's your question before we go? Uh, okay. So this is so random, but as someone who follows football a lot, do you have a take on JJ Watt? Are you a JJ Watt fan? Like, cause I have a take. I just am curious if you have a take on him. Yeah. Take him or leave him. I mean, he's, he's fine. Why should I, think I have he's so awful? You think he's awful? I think he's so cringe. Like his, everything he does. I, <laughs> I also don't pay attention to Twitter enough to be uh, to to see because I've seen some of his tweets and some of them. Are I just, just think kind he's of, so corny. I would take that over RG 3s tweeting any oh, day yeah. of the week. Well, RG three is a whole nother level, so I'm he's with you. Just there. become a meme at this point, dude. Even the stuff he says, like on broadcast, is crazy. It's just for like that three second clip. Like that wild numerology shit he was trying to do with LeBron and Kobe. Maybe. Oh, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. A lot of those personalities. I forgot like, about that one. That was the all timer. Yeah. He also had another insane take recently where it's just like face palm style, but yeah, that's what you get, man. They get, they're out of the league. They get bored. They need something to do. I'm hope I know actually that Jason Kelsey, when he accepts whatever gig it may be and gets paid a lot of money to talk, Will not be that way because Jason Kelsey, Cleveland's own baby. He's the fucking man. Yeah. Cleveland's finest. Is he Cleveland? I know they went to Cincinnati. Are they from Cleveland? Oh yeah, they went to Cleveland Heights High. Oh yeah, big. My dad went to Heights High. They went to Heights High. Um, oh, there you go. New Heights, the podcast name. Yeah, exactly. That's where it comes. From. And they rap Cleveland Heights hard. Well, I appreciate you guys hanging out, as always. Uh, SMP. I didn't even see that. Did you say that before I? <laughs> Did, did you say that before I mentioned RG3? Yeah. I uh, can't handle that anymore. So here's yeah. my thing about Watt, though, real quick. Like, the reason I feel this way is because I feel like everyone just loves him. I think a lot of people can't stand RG3. I feel like everyone loves J.J. Watt, and I'm over here like, this dude is so annoying. Yeah, I get it. Still RG3 for me. Anyway, yeah, guys, sure. appreciate you hanging out. Um, Hey. If, I forgot to ask, but if you if you don't mind, before on your way out the door, tap that thumbs up before you go. Help us get north of 100. We got 20 to go, 330 people watching with us. Follow Matt at Fantasy Tips Matt, me at Lafay underscore D. Shout out to Jordan producing this one. Remember, 30% off anything we've got for the next, well, till tomorrow. So hop on in. We'll see you over there. Make sure to say hi in the premium Discord when you sign up. See you back here tomorrow morning. Peace.